pursuant to the applicable law and my determination that attendance by remote means is necessary because an in-person meeting is not practical nor prudent due to the declared public health disaster caused by COVID-19, this meeting is conducted via video conference. This meeting is also being recorded and will be posted on the SSA website shortly after the meeting is completed. Thank you all for coming out and joining us this morning. Always the first item on our agenda to dismiss before we get into more serious business is our minutes. The minutes for the meeting of August 24th were circulated last Friday. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to review them. Um, are there any corrections or adjustments, amendments to the minutes? Mary, you didn't see anything? Our proofreader. That's unusual. <laughs> I have to admit, I didn't read them. Oh, oh I can't that's, that's find good. them. <laughs> I think I moved them into a, a, a different file, so I have to go back and find them. If anything does turn up, let us know and we will adjust the minutes. And, okay, uh, thank you. Does anyone else have any corrections to the minutes? There being none, then the minutes are accepted as circulated. Thank you very much, Ramond. We always have a hard time keeping track of who's attended. I'm very glad that we're video taping now, recording, so I can go back and look at the video and make sure we have it right as to who is actually in the meeting. It's a very handy tool to have. Um, as required, as guide under guidance from the city, the next item on our agenda is opening the floor to comments from our guests. Guests are allowed to speak at the beginning of the meeting, are not allowed to speak during the meeting, however, and you are, we ask you to please limit your comments to three minutes. So do we have anyone um, of our guests this morning who would like to address the commission on any issues related to the special service area? I see no raised hands, I see no chats in the chat, so I assume there are no comments or questions from the guests. Um, we do have a special quote guest with us this morning. We have a new nominee to become a commissioner. His application has been submitted to the city. His name is Shaka Mitchell and he is the co-owner and co the director of Anthos Training Clubs on 53rd Street and Lake Park, right there at the viaducts across from Starbucks and the Hyde Park Bank Building. So I asked Shaka if he would please take a couple of moments this morning and introduce himself to the commission and tell us a little about himself and why he thinks he would like to get involved with this organization. So Shaka, take it away. Thanks, George. Um, uh, like you just said, my name is Shaka Mitchell. Uh, I'm originally from O'Fallon, Illinois, which is a um, uh, part of southwestern Illinois. It's like by the border, like 20 minutes from downtown St. Louis. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Anthos Training Clubs. Uh, we're a fitness club located on 53rd in Lake Park, um, and we specialize in personalized training. Um, just essentially, we help working professionals feel confident, sexy, reinvigorated, uh, and pain-free through our personalized programs. A um, little bit about myself, uh, my current top three favorite artists right now are Drake, uh, Miguel, and Giveon. Um, top three favorite movies of all time would be um, Inception, the movie Life, the comedy, and Purple Rain. Um, huge Prince fan as well. Um, why I wanted to join the SSA 61, um, I was really just looking to get involved in the Hyde Park community. Um, and uh, knew, I had spoken with Diane before, uh, knew she was really involved um, in the area. So um, I reached out to her, uh, inquired about different opportunities. Um, she essentially let me know that uh, SSA 61 would be a great place to uh, start. So um, yeah, and then one interesting fact about me, um, I lived in Korea for three and a half years. Um, there I got a master's degree in Taekwondo from Yongin University. And um, I'm actually the first and only non-Korean American to graduate from the, um, the university um, in Taekwondo. So, yeah. 
welcome aboard. We're very happy that you've elected to join us, and it is, he has officially submitted his application. So this is what we're trying to lure him in. Uh, he's 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 taking the bait. So hopefully we'll be getting approval from the city uh, shortly, and he will become a full fledged commissioner. Thank you again, Shaka. We appreciate it. Um, so that's two new commissioners we've added this year. I'm glad to see James got his invitation this month. So he's he's back with us today. James, good to see you. Um, Next item on our business, on our agenda today, is our financial report, um, and that's usually Isaac. Isaac, are you going to start? Yes, you sir. can share now. <laughs> okay. Good morning to uh, all the commissioners. Hope all everyone is doing well as we uh, get ready to exit September and enter into October. Um, total cash in bank is seventy-seven thousand, compared to one hundred forty-nine thousand. And that's primarily attributed to you. We normally get our second disbursement in July and August. So that is not taking place. Um, so that's why you see that discrepancy. In addition to that, this time last year, there was really zero activity going on due to the pandemic. But this year, due to the vaccination, things kind of opened up during the summer months. So we did have uh, some more activity this year versus last year. So total assets at 358,691 compared to 431.01. Liabilities, accounts payable 4,600, deferred revenue 280. Due to SECC, we're current, so it's zero balance. So total liabilities at 284,729. Net assets, temporary restricted 63,000 this year compared to a negative 32,000 last year. Net surplus is 10,000 compared to 135 and total net assets 73,000 compared to 103. And as I mentioned to you, that's primarily driven to you have not received our second disbursements. They normally take place during July and August. So total liabilities and net assets at 358, 691 compared to 431.01. Any questions for the statement of financial position before we move on to budget versus actual? All right. Uh, so very similar to my comments at the very beginning because we have not received uh, our disbursements. Our revenue is still at 141 compared to all things equal based upon a prorated share of the budget. It will be right around 211,000. So right now you see we're under by 69,000 and total budget is 317. In addition, what we are taking into consideration within that 317, I believe it's about $40,000 of carryover that we had last year as well. Uh, coming down to our expenditures, how have we used the tax dollars that we received? Uh, 1.0 customer attractions at 26,000 compared to 58,000 and a total budget of 88. So you still have a total of $61,000 to spend. Public way aesthetics, um, 60,000 compared to 76,000, 77 compared to a budget of 115. So you still have 54,000 for the remainder of the year. Uh, 3.0, we have not spent anything there. You have a total budget of 30,000. 4.0 economics, we have not spent anything there, so you have 55,000 there. Public health and safety, zero there, and you have a total budget of 6,600 and a total budget for the year of 10,000, right around 10,000. Uh, management, you have 12,367 compared to a budget of 14, and you still have another uh, 10,000 to spend for the year. Uh, personnel, you have 31,000 compared to 30,000, so you're basically right on track. Total budget of 45,000, so you're remaining 13,000. So total expenditures at 131. You take that 131 less our revenue of 141, which does not include revenues from August and set August and July, that leaves with a net surplus of 10,000. Um, last year, the organization was aware that things may change due to the pandemic. And so within our budget, we do have um, provisions um, for a shortfall in our tax uh, revenue. So that is the conclusion of the uh, financial report of budget versus action. Any questions? Um, Isaac, I was reviewing the, uh, the report this morning, just checking through it. Could you go down to D41 on the sheet? I caught an error. It's an easy error to fix, but it will it will cause our numbers to be adjusted a little bit. If you look at that number, 
for public health and safety. It says 13334. It actually includes the numbers from 4.0 and 5.0. I got you. There you go. Got it. Great. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Accountability is your best friend. Thank you. <laughs> I always look and then look again. More questions for Isaac concerning our financial status. Uh, George, is anything, have we got in the news, have you covered it late on in from the TIF? There will be no money coming in from the TIF. Um, the city has decided that we do not have the right to collect anything going backwards or going forwards. And this can only be addressed when we reconstitute if we reconstitute going forward. So, um, and I have not heard anything from the Alderman in terms of actually spending the TIF funds, but I know it, it's on the agenda. Not the news I wanted to hear, but it yeah. is what it is. Thank you, George. More questions or comments? Great, thank you, Isaac, we appreciate that. No problem. Thank you, sir. So, um, I also circulated the budget tracker. Hopefully, everyone received that with no problem. And I can find my copy of it very quickly. I have too many things going on here. Here we go. So, um, I try to keep it straight in line with Isaac and where he his financial reports say we are. You can see that August was a fairly slow month. Um, not a lot going on. Diane and I have been working along with the Finance Committee trying to plan onward going forward. We will talk about that in a little bit. The bottom line, which is very important, is what's left to be spent by the end of the year. We are inquiring about the ability to carry over some of this, but there is a limit to, as to how much can be carried over of your total budget. So we really have to spend down this 185000 We know that about half of it will go automatically with expenses that we already have and that will have to be paid during the last quarter of the year. But there's another oh, approximately 90000 or so that we need to address what we want to do with it going forward. We have ideas and we'll be talking about that as the meeting progresses this morning. Questions? Any questions about the budget tracker? I think it's pretty straightforward this, this month. Great, thank you. Then find my agenda again next time in the business then oh Diane and I as I mentioned have been working on the spin down plans for 2021 Diane do you want to pull up the information and talk about that or do I need I have the sheet too do you want me to pull it up um well we can pull up the sheet if you want I didn't have it pulled up right now um I do I'm gonna make edits to because we've been spending um other things um, so do you have it up, George? I do. do you have it? Okay. Here we go. We talked about this at our last meeting and we have not, I don't think I've adjusted it very much since the last meeting. And this is just, this is not concrete. There was nothing in this set in concrete. This is just an idea document, a concept document of what we might want to do going forward. So Diane? Sure. So the first section up top is really things that are, that we're, you know, already moving on and talking about. Um, the holiday decor is not something to be finalized yet, but we definitely have um, agreed as a commission to move forward on all of the first section of numbers that total about 73,000, uh, with the exception of figuring out the holiday decor. Um, so we will be moving forward on those things. Um, we are in the process of developing our shop local campaign. We are hiring a consultant to help us with Shop Local and the service, uh, the online directory, um, some other things that we're doing. We're, we are waiting on permission from High Park Bank for the banner swap out. So we, now that we have new banners up on the side of the bank drive through, we would like to continue using that placement. So we were, are, we're going to be swapping out that as well as the banner on the side of Beloys for shop local campaign for Hyde Park. Um, Ramp the new awning is ordered. So that's going getting um, done uh, in the next month here. The postcard mailer already has been completed and that has gone out. 
um, the church. And I'm going to update these, George, and I'll send it to you. Sure. And then we'll, you and I will, in our next meeting, we'll go through it. Um, the church fencing, we only have one estimate. For some reason, we can't get anybody to call us back or email us back. So we are continually looking. But now Mia, our new intern, is going to do some research with some of the um, larger hardware type stores like the Lowe's and the office, Home Depot's. Um, to see about buying wrought iron fence and then having clean slate install because a estimate we just received for 122 feet of wrought iron fence was $19,000, which is not in our budget. And that's, I don't think that's a commitment at this time the SSA can make to the church, but we are committed to help figure that out. So we are still working on it. But our goal is to have it done in the next month here because we want to try to finish a lot of these improvements before winter. Uh, Kimbark Plaza Streetscape, that is now complete. So um, I just paid the bill today and they also did a, a, a round of watering this week because we know when you plant new plants, uh, you got to water them. And since we're at the end of the season, um, it may not look as fantastic as next season's going to look, but that's okay. Um, we know that we wanted to get that done this year. And then para washing we have coming up for the fall. So we'll be following up with Advanced Pro Clean on their contract and dates and also sidewalk maintenance. We have two garbage cans in the queue that we're gonna be buying from QCDC, which is another nonprofit organization and has a few SSAs and they have the same exact garbage cans as we do. Uh, and that is moving forward with fourth ward approving the locations on that. So once that all happens, we'll have clean slate install them. And then when you go down below on other projects, um, the online directory, we will be moving forward with hiring a consultant to work on that project along with Shop Local. Her name is Natalie Wright. She's a local um, woman owned uh, marketing and outreach kind of business, working with other businesses. And so I'm going to see what her um, skills are around outreach and how she can help complement um, our shop local and our directory this year. And some other things that we've been toying around with is the Viaduct art. Um, under the Viaduct, replacing those existing panels on 53rd. Um, George has been working on that and looking into estimates and the research around that project because it was last done many, many years ago. And then para washing, some other ideas is pre paying and getting that going for spring earlier than what we've done in past, as well as um, fa facade enhancement programs. And then we are going to talk more today about placemaking because some a couple of commissioners, um, Greg and Mary, had some ideas around placemaking. So Greg will be sharing that with us today. And then the other expenses down below, like to be incurred over these months, these are things that we need to take a look at. But we know some of these things are going to happen anyway um, with like supplies and printing and like all those things. So we're, we have a good plan in place. Um, so it's just a matter of, I guess at this point for us, it's all about what, what tax disbursements are we going to get in September and October? Because we projected a $60,000 shortfall this year based on what our liaison recommended. So last year we collected full. So it's kind of a waiting and guessing game, but the good thing is we have a plan. Any questions or comments? Yeah, the annoying part is that they've taken longer to make the disbursements this year. So we're really just sort of stuck. So much of this depends on how much money we receive. And until we know that, we really it's very difficult to proceed on many of these projects. Um, so we're just trying to be patient and wait and see until it comes in and we, and we get an actual number on how much um, how much we won't be getting. Yep, and in past years, our shortfall was always about 30,000. So we they encouraged us to budget double 
And some of those line items are in like 3.0 and some other areas that we plugged it into. Mary had a question. Mary, yes. I, I have a question, yes. Um, where is the awning that you're talking about, the new awning? It's gonna go on the front of, S of the office building here. We want um, special service area 61 to be spelled out. We have a new logo that actually, um, it's the old logo with downtown High Park, but next to it's a special service area 61. Um, maybe I can find it and share it. And um, we want to be more identifiable with the correct colors. The awning is dirty and disgusting. And we also know um, with new neighbors moving in the block, we would like to make sure that our business um, facade is is what we what we practice, what we preach. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that was a whole process too of finding a, a whole a contractor. Like it has been an interesting COVID two years here with contractors. Any other questions from the commissioners? Charles? Yes. Uh, you know, being the president of Kimbrough Plaza, and I, I, I think it's my place to shout out with a great appreciation what you guys, the SSA has done to, oh yeah. Here we go. Oh, wow, wonderful. To improve the shopping district West End Gateway. And I think this goes far in terms of what we can do and continue to do. We greatly appreciate your contribution. Yeah, that looks like pre-watering right there. Pre-watering, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. It'd be it, it would show up better if we had pre pre photos before and after. Mm -hmm. I thought to take pictures of that when it was yeah. just that wild jungle of grass and weeds growing in there. Yeah. I think this will actually fill in very nicely and we, we may have to replace some of the dried out plants next spring, but that's not a that's not a big deal. To do and it will be a spot of nice color these are all very heat tolerant plants that can take this sort of position you'll see that the wall structure is very low so it doesn't impede sight lines for either cars or pedestrians and i think it really helps better um, sort of identify this corner as an entryway into Kambark Plaza. Absolutely. And it wasn't until I was looking at the pictures until I realized, you know, the shape of this really reminds me a lot of the sea bench over on campus. There's, you know, it's just, it's a really nice sort of theme that gets echoed around this, this shape. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, I, it's just certainly makes a huge improvement. And we, we want to promise that we're going to continue to improve. And of course, change the mulch. <laughs> Brown, hardwood, natural. Brown, hardwood, natural. Okay, got it. Hey, Charles, don't feel bad. I'm not a natural landscaper. <laughs> and I manage these kinds of projects every summer for the last eight years. And so when I learn new things, I'm like, what? what really? You, you know, like what? mulch? Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Makes a difference. Yes. But thank you, Charles. Um, thank and you. just everyone knows the improvements our partnership with Kimbark Plaza. So SSA isn't fully funding the full project. SSA funded the landscaping, the um, filler, the fill-in mulch, and then Kimbark Plaza uh, paid for the landscape bricks and the circular. So it's a partnership. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <clears throat> Then we can continue on with our agenda related to the financials and our budget modifications for the coming fiscal year is we were just notified that we are required to have a community meeting. Diane, put yourself back on speaker and explain to us why we have to have this meeting. Sure. So when we submitted our 2022 budget, not our modified budget for this year, but our 2022 budget that was submitted in July, when we got our EAV, which is, George, what does it stand for? Uh, assessed, expected excess value. <laughs> expected excess expected. value for the district. It was a little bit higher. Not a lot higher, but if it's anything over 5%, which ours is 8% in our final budget from the city with the EAV, we have to have a community meeting um, to share that. 
and just you know overview how it's going to be spent. And so we will do that prior to our next meeting, which is an evening meeting. So our meeting will be at 6.30 and our evening meeting will be at seven. We will send out um, you know, all those materials when it gets a little bit closer, but wanted to get everyone the heads up. Yes, Mary. Can, can you explain what that EAV is? That's the money we get. That's what we get from the city. That's so the assessment when, value. When they give us our estimate of what to expect for next year, they tell us how it compares to the current year. And um, usually it's, you know, a three or 4% increase, but for because of a variety of different issues, um, ours has gone up, our expected income has increased by 8%, which is over hmm. the 5% threshold. So whether that's increased property values or people paying their bills better or whatever, um, it triggers the requirement that we have to have a community meeting. That way we explain to our, our audience how we plan to spend this money. And I don't think this has ever happened before. So it's kind of an inside joke with George and I that for some reason, these last few years, things that have never happened is, is all happening. So. <laughs> Murphy, blame, it on, blame it on COVID. It's all COVID's fault. <laughs> We're learning so much. Yeah. So, will that be an in-person in or Zoom? Do we know yet? This will It'll be, be on Zoom. Zoom meeting, and it will be open to the public. This is a public meeting, so we need to make every opportunity. I see Jared is online with us. We need to make every opportunity to publicize this community meeting. Um, and, you know, hopefully the commissioners will be able to attend. Um, yeah, it's hard at 630, but we will try and we will try our best to fulfill the obligation to the city to have a meaningful community meeting to discuss this budget. So that's on October 26th? Correct. 630. Okay. Followed by a regular commissioner's meeting at seven o'clock. Mm. Yep. Thank you, Diana. Appreciate that. Yeah, of course. All right. So in the process of having all these conversations and budget explorations and analysis and trying to figure out what's going on and where we're headed with all of this, um, we we have found a term that keeps coming up again and again. You know, in, 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 in the environment that we exist in right now, we really can't do a whole lot in terms of customer attraction or um, you know, event sponsorship and all that kind of stuff. It just isn't practical. So the term that has come up again and again is placemaking, identifying the place. And so Greg had put together um, a, a nice concept piece about how to do placemaking. And I thought it fit in really well with the document that the commission had requested about three years ago on when we were talking about the viaducts and what could be done to the viaducts to enliven them. So that was the document that I had sent out last night ahead of this meeting, just so everyone could refresh themselves on it. But I've asked Greg, since he had put together this nice concept piece, if he would lead a conversation on placemaking and what might be realistic for us to, to be looking at, particularly um, fairly soon. So as part of the spending down of our funds. So Greg, would you like to take over, please? Sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. So I, um, it was an email to George, and I didn't realize it would become a document for this whole group to, to share. So I think I should put some context on it. Um, we don't get a lot of credit for performing our core functions, um, you know, like washing garbage remediation or you know, power washing the streets. I, I think a lot of people just don't know that's the SSA who does those things. And that's what we're here to do is to do those things. Um, but we're about to reconstitute in a couple of years. And I think we need to do something that taxpayers will notice and remember when that time comes. And um, because we, we haven't been able to spend a lot of the money that we're required to spend um, because of COVID, um, we've got some money and we're required to spend it. And just felt like this was an opportunity to you know, transform uh, a public space and strengthen the connection between Hyde Parkers and Hyde Park. So, um, so I sent George and Diane a series of images and, you know, I just wanted to, you know, this is placemaking that I've seen in other communities, some in Chicago, some outside. And I, I just kind of wanted to just listen to your feedback and, 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 you know, so we can decide whether this is something we should pursue or not. Um, Diane, do you have that? 
document and just maybe if you can just scroll through it and and we can all just see and, and react to what's interesting. Okay, I'm sharing. So uh, do you want to talk through it, Greg? And I'll scroll. Sure, I believe uh, if you guys have ever been to Miami, there's a community called Windward Walls. Um, things started during Art Basel, um, but they have a ton of graffiti um, that's by professional artists that just is there to create an emotional connection between space and people. That was a building, uh, just a wall. gets a little bit more aggressive and, and here's an example from Mexico. Crosswalks would um, require some city permitting, but you know, there's a lot of people and, uh, and it's, it's a big business. Um, now um, concrete painting, we're starting to see it in cities all over the world. And I know we had at one point talked about crosswalks at the 55th and Lake Park, 53rd Lake Park and 53rd and Woodlawn, um, possibly, or maybe even down at High Park Boulevard. We kind yeah, of I mean, toyed around with that. Lake Park, which is the entrance to our community, it also looks a little commercial and it's not the most welcoming entrance. So I think something like this would certainly um, reset the first impression of Hyde Park. Yeah, because these are really cheerful and colorful and they get your attention in a very positive way. It also gives a sense of connection and, and entry. You know, it kind of connects from one end, one side to the other one or either, you know, a community. So I, I thought, I think it's pretty unique. And I know one of Greg's ideas, and Greg can expound upon this, is like, what can we do that's like a bigger placemaking or tangible escape, um, like something like this? Hmm. This seems like a public park, maybe. You know, Hyde Parkers are still obsessed with chess boards. <laughs> now, public seating is always um, tricky. tricky and also like a point of contention in some areas. I don't know if you all remember like a couple of years ago when I first took on the executive director role, I talked a little bit about being a part of this conference where there was a speaker that talked about business corridors should be for everyone ages zero to 80. And there should be something for everyone and to make it friendly and welcoming and not looking at transient populations as the enemy. And so that's, we have some work to do around that because there's not many seating areas and it is yeah. a contention. I mean, in, in the, there's sidewalk furniture that doesn't have to be comfortable. You know, like, you know, I don't think we want homeless people sleeping on this at night, but you know, that, that isn't necessarily going to be the outcome. The concept plan for the viaducts that we had shows some benches in it that really caught my attention. They were very colorful, but they weren't flat, they were curves. So they were, you know, very oddly shaped and would fit in different places. And you would never sleep on one of them. Your, your, your back would get so twisted trying to sleep on them. But they were great to sit down for five minutes and take a break, that kind of stuff. There's, um, so on the side of our leasing office, we painted, Mac painted a big, like I love Hyde Park heart type of thing. And uh, at the time, you know, that wasn't the intention, but it sort of became a, a great backdrop for Instagram. We started seeing this image throughout um, 
and I think it, at some point it even made it into a, a CNN travel piece for Hyde Park, which which is interesting. But when we create um, public art like this, you know, social media now has the ability to really extend our message in multiples. This is a poster messaging kind of kiosk board. I've seen a lot of our neighborhood enhancement grants. We've had some different ones with different types of kiosks. You can post community things. There's also a long history of this in Hyde Park that those of you who've lived here for a while remember the one in front of the Medici over on 57th Street. There was one at the corner of 53rd and Harper that I used to read all the time, right there where the Pulsey Center is today. Big, huge square board that was always covered in messages. It was it was a, a great way to communicate with the community. And I think that's it. So I don't think we're looking for an okay. Oh go ahead, Greg. I was just gonna say I don't think these were like specific examples that we're looking for a vote, do this or do that. I think we're we're trying just to elicit some sort of reaction from this group to figure out whether you know, we like the idea of placemaking at all. It could be anything. We like strung overhead a street. You know, we just, it's, it's a lot of work to sort of um, research that process. And, and I don't think we want to go further if, you know, if, if the SSA, you know, if, if, if we're not interested in it. Um, so. So this is, um... George sends this out as a reminder to all of us of this viaduct study we had done a couple of years ago, um, looking at the viaducts and there's some really great ideas. And please take some time to read back through this because this is very relevant now to what we're doing. Like currently in this last, you know, end of the year here. Um, so obviously there's project goals around activations and viaducts, but let me find, well, obviously this talks about existing conditions, which we all know these lovely existing conditions because we walk past them every day and we drive past them every day and we hear our neighbor complaints every day. Um, and here's 55th. And we know that these viaducts are gonna be a much larger project that we're hoping will be allocated through SPIF dollars through the alderman's office. Um, they did give us, you know, that viaducts were being looked at. So hopefully we will be involved in that process. And then talk to the community. And then here's some art and architecture. I don't know how to get rid of this thing on the side, but these are just different examples of public art and things. So this again is like a really great way for commissioners and SSA staff and SECC team to take a look at and if something sparks for us because I think we want to do something that's impactful. So brand identity, I don't wanna overkill you guys on that. You've heard a lot about that over the years. Neighborhood context, I think these are, you know, we're the main business. Let's see, uh, Viaducts at 53rd. Okay, I'll just go through all this. Yeah, keep going down, keep going down. Oh, this elevation, the wear and tear, Mary, don't say anything um because we all know it and then here's some oh gateway look and feel sort of like what Greg just shared with some of like the high park um we know it's going to take a lot of money to do new big signs like these over the streets um Fulton Market is one that's local or maybe um some of you may be familiar with the um Humboldt Park and the Puerto Rican flag that goes over division some of those things that probably costs like thousands and thousands of dollars, but this gives us ideas of what we could do. Um, here's some look and feel for pedestrian. We all know lighting projects are very expensive, but these are just, again, for us to think about what we could do. Here's some more wayfinding, which we've done some light wayfinding, but we, we could do more Hyde Park centric, you know, Here's some of those uh, crosswalks and pedestrian walkways. A map on the side of a hole like this would be really cool if we did some kind of like 
interconnecting tourism type thing that interconnects the district. Here's some other look and feel type things, the so non-traditional seating. Um, just some ideas. There's those chess boards again. Um, here's some more greenery look and feel that was discussed. And some of you have seen this before because this was from a few years back. Um, we know an installation like that any of these may would take a little bit more, but I think it's something we can play on or we can develop through this. Um, and then streets, some biodoc opportunities, they kind of give us some ideas of where some opportunities could go. Skip through the elevation. Extending beyond Viadox, so like looking at these existing murals, looking at the existing spaces in the area that maybe there's some additional potential that could be looked at. Um, so like here at 55th, they're saying, you know, on the side of the mural could go some potential seating or, um, and these were, uh, I think this is it. Okay, so that's it. Any thoughts, any questions? Maybe let everyone simmer on these ideas and feel free to email George and I. We can talk about it now, like whatever. Let's, let, let me throw one more screen share at everyone um, because in preparation for this discussion, one of the things that occurred to me was what exactly, where exactly are we talking about? So Sunday afternoon, I went out with my camera and walked around the neighborhood walked around the footprint specifically, looking at places where there are what I would consider opportunities to do this. So if you recognize this wall, the former pockets, future small Cheval, 53rd and Kim Bark, and they probably have plans for this, but this is an example of the kind of space where we could step in and, and you know, take an ugly structure and do something with it. Uh, Diane identified this building right next to Anthos on Lake Park, just this large brick land wall that get you know gives helps give lake park an industrial feel uh here's one of my favorite spots this is the other side of the viaducts on 53rd street i can just imagine all kinds of troploi murals being put into these arches and creating a great effect on the street my number one preference i have two number one preferences this is one of them frank needs to go away i mean this is a huge wall space it would be very easy um, it's outside of the viaducts. It's not inside the viaducts. I don't think we would need Canadian National or anyone else's permission to do this, anyone beyond the cities. Um, there's the same location on 55th Street right outside of the viaducts. This is across the street from the Dare building. This is Kakuya here on the corner. And you can just see this large sort of banded looking wall looking grim and dirty. Um, and, and even places like here, this is Hyde Park Shopping Center, the corner where Walgreens stores their trash. And it's just this large, vacant, vapid wall with no color and no life in it. Um, these, these aren't necessarily recommendations. They're just ideas about places we could consider. And I would encourage all the others who are interested in this to walk around the community, walk around the footprint with an open eye, identifying spaces like this where we could do different kinds of um, structures, whether it's art or murals or, or benches or seating or changing the lighting. I love, I love those crosswalks across the street. So there are lots of ways we can progress on this. I would love it if some of this could happen before Christmas. We know the big things can't, but maybe some of the smaller stuff could because we need to spin down that budget and this would be a very effective way to do it. Um, I also think that the proper protocol for moving this forward is to refer the activity to the program committee. So we have a program committee that's this Mary, Diane, and then Greg has been participating in it. I think several other folks have been sitting in on it. And my record, my, my memory is that your next meeting is next week. Is that correct? Tuesday. So I'd really like the um, program committee to take these ideas and any feedback that anyone would care to send to all of us about these spots, these ideas, these concepts, and see if the program committee can find a way that we can start acting on it. Thinking in terms of a lot of this stuff will be long-term. The aldermen have asked us to hold off on the viaducts themselves for now. We can't tackle the viaducts. 
they're planning to put TIF money into restoration of the viaducts, improved lighting, all that kind of stuff. So those are those are sort of off our plate at the moment. But the entrance to the viaducts on either side, the crosswalks on the streets, the 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 graffiti covered walls, the art panels that are hanging around, which are not part of the viaduct structurally, are all fair game to talk about and to look at. So if there's no objection, I will refer this conversation to the program committee and ask the program committee to report back to us at our next meeting on where we might go with this. Any questions or comments? George. Yes, please, Charles. It was it 50, 50, uh, no, 65th and the Vidoc? And who commissioned that one? That that one is really looks it's gorgeous. wonderful. I love that. that yeah. Movie. Beautiful. It's colorful and bright and cheerful. Yes. Um, yeah. So 65th and Dorchester Viaduct. Um, I believe that was a project with the Woodlawn neighbors. Um, and that is a mosaic. But 64th and Dorchester was commissioned by SECC and the University of Chicago. Looks gorgeous. Yes, it does. So we're not. I'm not. We're, I'm very familiar with mural and projects and things. I think we just need to figure out what we're going to do and start, you know, moving that direction once we get permission. And then also we know what our second disbursements are going to be. That will help us determine all of the planning. And one of the things that we really need to think about is what's, what's our goal? Is there a message that comes out of this? Is it just visual or is there something we want to say? Some of these, like if we do murals or something like that. So this is just, this is this, this whole conversation was meant to stimulate thinking and everyone is encouraged to please send us your ideas, your comments, and we'll make sure the program committee gets it and um, see how we can follow through. As Diane noted, this is all contingent upon whether or not we get our expected disbursements. Yeah, but I definitely time. think we could use, like if we decided not to do a holiday decoration, we could use some of those funds for like doing some sort of mural or a wayfinding or, you know, something. But we'd also have to start researching all of this stuff, which, um, you know, we can start doing. Right, and, and, and just the program committee should keep in mind that um, ideally, there'll be two objectives. One is short term. Is there something we can do in the next three months that would have an impact? And then longer term for planning for next year, because again, we, we will have a larger budget than anticipated because of the carryover. Remember, there is an additional carryover for next year. So our budget will be larger than anticipated. And, and that's for reconstitution, not for placemaking. Well, uh, you know, if we but, get part of what's in the budget this year, plus the 30,000 that we're already carrying over, we will have more than sufficient funds to do all the above. But we need to be prepared to do it in a, in a, in a responsible way. That actually leads us to our next agenda item, which is updates from our program committee. So is this Diane or Mary or both? Both. Yes. Good. Take it away. Mary, do you want to start or do you want? Um, you, you can go ahead and start. OK. Because well, you've got most of the stuff. Yeah. As everyone knows, we started, um, obviously, we already gave the update on Kimberk Plaza. So that was one of the things we were working on. Um, the other thing that we are working on, um, why is everything just like, I have to look at the agenda now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, the, oh, United Church Landscaping, I also reported back on what's going on with that. I know that the church and its volunteers have been working on the landscaping, which looks great. They got a lot of plants donated, and those are all really cool things. And that part of the project is funded by the Neighborhood Enhancement Grant through SECC. But we, as a commission, said, you know, we could probably help match some of those funds up to $5,000 help with um, some low fencing. And so that was what I referenced earlier that we have had nothing but um, challenges in getting contractors to respond. And so um, it's just a different time and that's, it's been kind of universally we're having these challenges. But something we are working on is we got, we're getting two garbage cans um, to install near the church and we're just waiting on streets and sanitation to tell us exactly where, and then we will um, 
get clean slate to install them. So those are a few things we're working on. Um, some, uh, is there other things we want to share today, Mary? I think we have some definitely some marching orders from this place making. Right, we do. <laughs> we do. Um, uh, is there any update on the um, uh, the directory for the service? Uh, sure. So the update is, well, so Mary, George, and I had worked on this comprehensive business list that we're trying to fill in all the gaps so that way we can get our online directory back up online and more accurate. And so we are going to be hiring, like I mentioned, a local consultant named Natalie, who um, will help us work through the outreach to businesses for Shop Local, but then also at the same time working on this database. Because if you're making these touch points, you got to keep you know updating, updating. So we will. Um, I'll see if she can come to you know a future meeting, Mary, so we can talk further with her about what you're thinking or any challenges, but um, we're going to see if we can have her do it between now and the end of the year and finish it out between the two programs, Shop Local and the online. So those were some mm -hmm. of the areas that we initially were like, these are the things we can commit to this year, but now we know we will also be committing to <laughs> thinking. we'll also be doing some other things that are going to come up and that's okay. And that's you know, why we had to timeline it out with the projected um, budget. Remember that these committees are open. These meetings are open. So any of our guests are welcome to attend them if you would like. If someone wishes to attend commissioner or guests, is it the same link as we're using for this meeting? It is not. It's got its own link, but the full, all the commissioners are invited to it. So we will, um, I'll go back to make sure everyone's on there. And if someone from the public is interested in joining that committee, I will make sure you're at it. And so just let me Reach out to me. Know. I'll make sure you get the information. Yep. Great. Thank you both. We're, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing the, the next meeting. I will try to be there at the next meeting as well. So just, just to observe, I'll be quiet. And that uh, day, just so everyone knows, is the first Tuesday of every month. So that is Tuesday, October 5th at 10 a.m. Tuesdays are our days. Hey, and might as well. You want to continue on with discussing branding? Oh, sure. Um, sorry, I have to always look back at this. Um, so we are starting with uh, light branding for the SSA. We did a postcard mailer. And I'm going to share two graphics with everyone today that we have... Um, started with, uh, why am I getting too many screens open, y'all? Um, ah. So we had a postcard go out that had this owl graphic. If some of you remember when the SSA first started, we used an owl graphic. And this is really the logo here, as I mentioned, it's got special service area 61 next to downtown Hyde Park. And so, we recently sent out a mailer that had this kind of graphic on it, but it had a hashtag, uh, if you know, you know, and a QR thing, that QR code that you could scan with your scan and it could tell you like six things about a high part of SSA you didn't know. So I'm gonna try to find that too. I didn't have that pulled up, George, um, but I will share the SSA logo. Um, I know we're giving a lot today, so I know your brains are just all just working and I look forward to getting some feedback. So this is just so everyone can see it in the blue and white colors. And moving forward, we will be using special service area 61 in conjunction with downtown High Park more regularly, more frequently. And we're doing some light campaign and branding around what SSA is. Um, so let me see if I can pull that up. Um, I didn't have that up. I should have. Are there any questions at this time? And the reason yeah. why we're starting the rebranding, <laughs> you want to talk about that, Mary, why we're starting rebranding or? Oh, no, I was going to ask you a question, um, <laughs> which is like, where, to whom were the postcards sent? 
Um, it was sent to uh, residents of 60615, and I don't have the exact number on that. How many were sent? I don't know if CEI is still on the call. Um, Do you have an example of what the postcard looked like so we can see it? It went to 4,700 people. And I do have an example of a postcard so you can see it. I just have to pull find the graphic. Um, so, so it went to residential and not to the businesses? Residential because we wanted people to, to understand and learn what is SSA 61? What is that? Um, sorry. Okay, because um, I know I haven't received it. At when did you send it? It went out last week. So everybody on this call should have gotten it because everybody on this call should have received it. Did anybody receive it? Sorry, I'm getting this the video. I was trying to open this link, but it took me. And not everybody, so I shouldn't say that. Okay. Um, yeah, some people might have received it. I can't guarantee what it was received or not, but we did use a service that we've used before. Um, George, did you receive it? No, but it went out to people east of the train tracks, not west. Oh, I know so, west of the tracks. <laughs> it was mainly lakefront oriented, I believe. The targeted areas, you know, there's specific delivery routes, and I believe what was targeted was the area along the lakefront. So here's a video that when you click on this thing, it's six facts. So I'm gonna play that for everyone. What is the IYK? What? what is that? If you know, you know. Uh, it's actually trending on social media. Um, I'm going to try to. Ah, there we go. Don't you know? I guess not. If you know, you know. Um, it's a hashtag. And it was on the postcard. The postcard kind of like was like when you scan the QR code, it's the same branding as this on one side. And on the other side was a farmer's market plush. Um, our last day was uh, this past Sunday. And so then you can't find the postcard. Could you please send it when you when you do come up with a copy? I would send it out to all the commissioners so everyone could see it. Sorry to make more work, but I think it would be helpful for everyone to actually see it. Sure. That and perhaps if they can tell us where it was it was sent to. Okay. Maybe people in the um in the, who are paying the taxes. More okay. questions for Diane about the brand? So that's just like some light branding that we're starting with, which will be expanded upon within the next year as we move towards reconstitution of the SSA. And I'm sorry, the branding is the color change? No, it's the branding of what Secretary of 61. Okay. Because it needs to be known what that is when the surrounding community, we bring people together for community meetings, which I've never done the recon, I've never reconstituted an SSA. Uh, Wendy would be the person and George most experienced probably on this call, um, and maybe Mike McGarry. Um, I, mean, I, I definitely think it's smart to start now. 
So I think yep. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah just light, just some light branding starting to end this video. Super cute, can be shared all over. The real message is trying to get out the concept of SSA 61. That's, 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 that term is what we really need to promote. And if we link it to downtown Hyde Park or whatever, that's fine. But really getting out what SSA 61 is and does. Remember the first time we we when we were first formulating this thing many 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 years ago, Andy. Um, most of the objections didn't come from local businesses; it came from residents surrounding the footprint, who were very much afraid that they were going to be taxed for it. I mean, those folks who live in the condos at 53rd and Cornell were vehement about not wanting the SSA because they knew their tax, their property taxes would be going up. It took a lot of reassurances to make them aware that they were not, they would not be seeing any increase in their taxes. They were not included in the tax levy because they were not a business area. We'll, we'll go through that same discussion again as part of the reconstitution. There'll be a lot of people showing up saying, why are you going to raise my property taxes? And we have to make people understand the SSA only applies to the businesses in the footprint, not to private residences, condos, townhomes, or anything like that. Okay. Well, thank you all so much uh, for that. You have one more, Diane, and that is the announcement of our RFP for a new program manager. Sure. Um... The, pro the program manager job description went out um, on Tuesday the 14th, I believe, or Friday the 17th. And so it'll be open for a month. Um, we have not gotten a lot of submissions. Last time we got a lot more um, early on. So hopefully we'll get some more. It is posted on all websites, but also on the npo.net, which is the main job board for nonprofit jobs and um, that was shared with all the commissioners as well as the SECC board. So if you know someone that is qualified or someone you can share it with, please do so. Um, we want to get the right fit. We want to find someone with a strong programmatic background that can be trained on the other components, um, some of the vendor management and things. Raymond and I are very comfortable doing now at this juncture, but some of the things that we identified was that we needed someone that could build relationships, be out on the corridor, manage programs and projects, and help um, with some of those areas that have emerged that seem to be more important, or equally important, I should say. Any questions, uh, please feel free to send my way. Great, thank you. All right, last item on our agenda is questions and comments from the commissioners. So is there anything that any one of the commissioners would like to bring up, any issues or comments, please? Charles, was that a thumbs up? You're muted. I'm muted, okay. I, I'm just wondering, do anybody else feel the non-publication of the groundbreaking of Obama Center. It seems like a low-key type atmosphere. Uh, not much talk about it. It seems like I've heard more national than local. I, I just wanted, does anybody have any thoughts on why is, 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 you know, that's not a big push or turnout or publication? Uh, I don't understand what you mean. It's out of our footprint. We can't discuss it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's off our table. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I was thought it was nearby. That could yeah. be well, we can discuss it. It is nearby, George. And I personally think that um, the powers that be are being mindful of COVID and not having hundreds of people come to a groundbreaking. I'm sure there are key stakeholders that made the cut. <laughs> or key, you know, people involved on the project, like Obama Foundation officials, the architect, you know, people like that, um, but small, I'm sure. We are definitely watching out the window here on 53rd Street because that's how we met him before. Um, and actually that was when Wendy was here and she screamed, he's here. And we all like ran outside. So um, 
going to Valois for lunch? Is that the plan? Yeah. <laughs> He's hanging around, walk past Valois a few times. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was no in. I don't know whether they don't, like you might say, that you don't want all kind of people showing up, but there was no indication of time or anything like that. Or who. So it's going to be online. I mean, they're, they're streaming it. So I can send you the, the link to Please it do. watch it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, some time down the road, there will be more of a community engagement around the groundbreaking and all of those things. But as you all know, it, although at times we're not sure what's happening in this world, we are still in a pandemic and we still want to follow the guidelines. So is what okay, I sent it to you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good. More okay. questions, comments, in order I'd like to raise. Why do I feel like this meeting has lasted two hours? I know. <laughs> we're we're chatty. It's only been an hour and 15. I uh, The last thing I wanted to report out on, I forgot to, was farmer's market. Um, yesterday was our last day of the farmer's market for this season. We did have a shorter season, and uh, we've gotten a lot of valuable feedback. Uh, we were up to roughly 16 vendors a week, which is pushing our uh, max um, with what the space we said we would use in the bank lot. And um, it's been really like growing. So we're, we have laid the, the right foundation and the right vibe for next season. And so we're really excited. I want to thank the High Park Bank for their support and in-kind support of the lot. And then we also did receive a small sponsorship um, from the, on the SECC side from the University of Chicago Medical Center. Um, because of the natural um, crossover with health. So um, it overall was a good season and we will be doing a survey to vendors as well as a vendor wrap up meeting in the next few weeks. And I have asked Diane to give a more complete report at our next meeting when we know the financials and how it did. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we will be able to you know, talk about the um, return on investment and the, you know, how it translates to economic investment in the footprint and all of those things. So we will be working on that um, in the next. Thank you, Diane. Our next scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, October 26 at seven o'clock PM. This is our evening meeting. It will be preceded by a community meeting at 6.30 p.m., um, which we hope you will all be able to attend to discuss our budget with our community. Um, if there is no further business, no objection, then this meeting will be adjourned. Thank you all for coming out this morning.